the victories you won. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house yet one more time. And we're so thankful that you have joined us for another session of the worship hour. This morning, this morning, God has blessed us with the speaker of the hour, Reverend Donald Rose. And I know that he's going to have a word for us this morning. God is good. God is so great. Amen. The word I'm going to speak on this, this day is to let you know that morning, you know, to move on because better is on the way because I want to let you know that no matter what you put put your life into no matter the things that you've done God is still good amen he will take you through and even if that thing that you put yourself into doesn't take care of you but just know that God has something better for you Amen. Amen. As you've heard that preview, I want everybody to get ready. I want you to get ready. I want you to get ready. Come on, everybody. Let's go to church. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Come on, call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. I want you to call on the name Jesus. when we call on the name of Jesus. When he hates it when we call on. So somebody call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil has no power in this place. The children of God have come to the house of God, have come to praise their God, have come to call on their God, have come to worship their God. Now let me share something with you from the word of God. The Bible says that God is our refuge. Somebody say refuge. refuge. And strength. And strength. A very present help very in trouble. Present. Meaning he's right here right now. Since God is a present help, the Bible says, therefore we will not fear. Hallelujah. Even though the earth be removed. Even though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with this swelling, Selah, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged and the kingdoms, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord. Somebody say the Lord. The Lord. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Somebody say God is our refuge. A very present help in trouble. We give him glory. We give him honor. And we give him praise this morning. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. The Lord is in this place. He is in the midst of his people. He is in this place. And we shall worship. We shall praise. And we shall magnify his holy name. Amen. 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 Somebody give me an amen. 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 And amen. Hallelujah. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass of my way. You're the fire and light when nights are long and cold. In sadness, you are the laughter. The shadows of my fears When I'm all alone Your hand is there to hold Oh, yes it is Yeah, yeah Jesus You're the center of my Oh, 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 oh. All that's good You're the heart of my contentment. 
found pleasure in the simple things of life you're the music in the meadows and the stream oh yeah 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 the voices of the children my family and my home you're the source and the finish of my highest dream. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. Jesus, you're the center of why I found pleasure in the simple things of life. You're the music in the meadows and the stream. Oh yeah, yeah. The voices of the children, my family, and my home you're the source and the finish of my highest dream oh yes you are oh yes you are jesus you're the center of my soul oh, oh, oh. all that's good Center oh, oh Jesus, you are the center of my oh Jesus, you are the center. And when I'm nowhere, 
Jesus. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. today God has given us a man of the hour to come and to preach and it's none other than one of our own associates Reverend Donald Rose and we want to hallelujah we want to encourage Reverend Rose this morning as he gets ready to come and bring the word so I'm going to ask if you all would just point to Reverend Rose and let's just say this prayer Lord bless Reverend Rose as he brings the word of God. Lord bless Reverend Rose as he brings the word of God. Amen. I believe we already had church. Amen. Normally, my mother always has the last word, amen? <laughs> but today I got to break protocol, amen? <laughs> so we're going to go and get in this, amen? Let us pray. Stand, please, for me, please. If you could, please stand on your feet. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you once again. We give you praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this moment, Father God. Dear Lord, we thank you for what you've already done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do, Father God. Dear Lord, we just ask that you bless each and every person in this house right now, Father God. Bless their whole household, Father God. And dear Lord, we thank you right now for the shepherd of this house, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that he receives word from you, Father God, to give us sweet and guidance and counsel, Father God. Whether it may be to construct, whether it may be to build, whether it may be to lift you up, or whether it may be to sit you down. Father God, we thank you right now. Bless his whole household, Father God. Dear Lord, because we know, Father God, not only does he have to worry about his household, Father God, but he has to worry about this house, Father God. So we thank you, dear Lord. Father God, and I just ask you right now just to use me, Father God. Don't move, don't move me out the way, but just use me, Father God. And let me, Father God, just be your willing vessel. And dear Lord, in all this we say, amen. Amen, amen. amen. and amen. Amen. If you do have your Bibles, please, if you would, please turn to 1 Samuel chapter 15. And if you don't have a Bible, you probably have a device with Bible on it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, turn it on. <laughs> turn it on. Some of you may use a fingerprint. Some of you may use your face. Amen. But just turn it on. Amen. 1 Samuel 15. And I'm going to begin reading in verse 24. Amen. It says, Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandments of the Lord, and the words and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voices. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. And as, and as Samuel turned around to go away, Saul seized the edge of the robe of Entorid. 
So Samuel said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to, to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. And also strength of Israel will not lie nor relent for he is not a man that he should relent. Then he said, I have sinned yet honor me now. Hmm. Please before the elders and my people and before Israel and return with me that I may worship the Lord your God. <laughs> so Samuel turned back after Saul and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then Samuel said, bring Agai, king of the Amalekites, here be to me. So Agai came to him cautiously. And Agai said, surely the bitterness of death is past. Eh, wrong answer. But Samuel said, as the sword has made women childless, so shall the mothers be childless among women. And Samuel hacked Agai in pieces before the Lord of Gigal. Then Samuel went to Ramah and Saul went, went up to his house of Gib Gibeah and Saul of Saul. And Samuel went no more to see Saul until the day of death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. Amen. I want you to take, look at your neighbor and tell him, move on. Move on. And look at your other neighbor and tell him, better is on the way. Is on the way. Amen. You may be seated. You know, this is kind of like a, a hard thing to teach today. Because I don't really consider myself a preacher. I say I preach, teach, amen? So I want to break something down to you today, amen? Have you ever met somebody who think that they were doing all good on their own self? Have you ever seen that person who you give just a little bit of authority and they think they're all that? Have you ever seen somebody whose head got so swelled just because you told them they look good? Have you ever been around people who just say that I don't need none of this, I don't need none of that. All I need is myself. Just because you gave them just a little bit of authority. See, sometimes when you give people authority, they let that authority just run over their head. They think just because they have it, they can tell and do, tell you to do and do and do anything they want to do. They say, do as I say, not as I do. Ooh. Because see, sometimes they think that they have the right to do that. Amen. But see, the sad part about it is sometimes the people keep egging them on, egging them on. You keep doing you, you keep doing you, you doing good, you doing good. And that makes his chest, that make a person's chest get swell even bigger, amen? Because they think that they're doing right. They think that they believe that they're doing right. But see, they forgot a couple of things. Who gave you that authority? Who gave you that authority? Something inter interesting to me this morning from Sunday school, I, I copied this right out of the book. I like it says this, however false teachers wanted to divert them from truth. The people's plans are not the work of God and their teachings do not reflect the foundation of Christianity. Ooh, that does not reflect our mission statement, amen? Because, see, sometimes when you think that you're doing something just because somebody else did it, that don't mean it makes it right. Amen? It does not mean it. But, see, the sad part about it is sometimes you got the person who actually giving you that authority, giving you instruction to do some things. Amen? See, that's why I'm thankful for our pastor. He takes a whole strong responsibility. Because everything that he tells us, everything that he mentors, or everything that he teaches, everything that he prays, everything that he preaches, every place that he goes, he's representing God and he's expecting us to follow what he does. Amen? Amen. 
Because see, a responsibility is something that you give to people. Have you ever heard that word designated? responsibility, designated authority, say I'm giving you the responsibility to do this because I'm trusting you to do this. Amen? Because see, some God see talks to him and he puts it in on us. Amen? Because how can he tell us to go a place that he's never been? Amen? Because see, when you are on your knees day in and day out and you're seeking God and you're delivering something what God gave you to give, you expect somebody to walk up in it. Amen. Because if they don't get it, you tell them a different another way. Amen. Y'all remember WWJD that people, the brace that people would wear? It says, what would Jesus do? It's many ways you can say that. What would Jesus do? What will Jesus do? What will Jesus do? There's many ways you can say it, but somebody's going to catch it a different way. Amen? Because, see, what Jesus would do is what he always does. He came to do the will of the Father. Amen? No other thing did he come to do. Everybody still here with me today? I'm going to take you to a place because I need to tell you about Saul for a minute, all right? See, I have to I have to look this up because I wanted to be correct on who he was. Because I got his background. I'm going to tell you about his background. He he starts about in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8. I'm going to tell you some things that brought Saul to be who he was. But see, the Israels, they demanded for a king. They wanted to be like other nations. They said, I need, let's get us a king. But see, they forgot who'd been supplying them all this time. But see, they wanted to have somebody physical presence just for to say, hey, tell us what to do. But see, God brought them to a place that he led them. He was feeding them. He was giving them everything they need. But we need a king. God, we don't see God, but he's forever present. Just because he doesn't answer us right now and yesterday doesn't mean he's not there. Amen. Amen. You don't need somebody to stand in place of who God is. Amen. Because we came in this place to give God praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Jesus, he will fix it. All the songs that they sing, he will. I don't know how, but I know he's going to do it. I don't know when, but I know he's going to do it. Who are you putting your trust in? You don't need to see somebody. Amen. Amen. And if you came church here today. Just because you want to hear these wonderful, awesome, singing, praise, music. You're in the wrong place. But if you came in to join in, you came to the right place. Amen. You came to the right place. Can you imagine this? Samuel, Saul, was called to do something. Called to do a thing. But everything that God wanted him to do. He did the opposite. Everything that he didn't want him to do, he said, I'm going to do it. Whoo, that's not paying attention, amen? That's not paying attention. You tell a little kid, don't touch that stove. It's going, it's hot. <laughs> I see it happen. I see it happen every day. I got a little Maddie. She does it every day. I tell her, get off that stool. You're going to hurt yourself. Mm-hmm. She gets down, I start to turn around. She's like, diving like Wonder Woman. <laughs> I seen her get hurt, but she covered it up. She says, I ain't going to do that no more. <laughs> oh, I love the child. I love her. I love her. But God, the people, of, the people of Israel just did not know. They wanted to be like other nations. So the God, God folded. Sometimes you're going to nag him and nag him. Now, you know what? I'm going to give you what you're asking for. You know, I'm going to give you what. See what you can do with it. See what you can do with it. God said, you know what? I'm going to do this thing. So therefore, he says, Samuel, give him somebody. I'm going to tell you who to get. And you know what? I'm going to appoint him the king. Amen. See, sometimes God grants you your request, not knowing what you're asking for. Amen. Ooh. So now Saul comes in and appointed Saul nothing short but problems. 
That's all Saul brought was problems. That's all he brought, not to the people because they kept egging him on. But see, spiritually, he brought them problems because whatever God was putting in was not what Samuel, I'm Saul, excuse me, Saul, Saul was putting out. Amen. Because see, whatever God puts in pastor, we ought to produce Woo, what he's putting out. Amen. Because anybody who labors before you on their knees, praising and looking and this, that, or the other, God is a good God because he allows them to do what they do. Amen? Because I want you to think back pre-COVID. Everything was everything. Everything was all good. Everything was doing all this, that, or the other. Next thing you know, everything shut down. Everything shut down. But I want you to look at God. God said, you know what? I'm going to open up a door some other way. Don't think just because you doing all of this, I'm going to stop this. And I like this because not only did he hear what God was saying, ooh, other churches seem to follow. Y'all catch that in a minute. Because I've been home some Sundays and I've seen all the work that somebody did. That they follow behind because God led it, amen? And when God touches it, it blesses it and it blooms, amen? amen. It, it, go ahead, amen, give praise. <laughs> Within all that time, I, I, Pastor, see, you, you started that. He, he, when he came up here talking, the things that he wanted to do, the things that the church wanted to do, COVID didn't stop it. In fact, it made it boom up here, amen? Look at the doors that were opened. Look at the lives that were touched. Look at everybody who came to worship God. Look at how the internet just blew up. Look at all the production that went along, amen? And then I noticed a lot of churches just falling suit. And I know they got intel from somebody that's sitting behind me right now. But see, the thing about it is, he heard from God. He heard from God. See, instead of calling out for something, we need something else. He said, I'm going to use what God gave me. I'm going to flourish in what he did. I'm going to walk in what he said. I'm just going to press on and press on. Amen. See, sometimes when you do those things, God shows up and shows out. Amen. The last thing, one of the things that God instructed Samuel to tell Saul, he wanted him to destroy Amalek, to completely wipe it out, to destroy everything, man, woman, or child, beast, living, or finance, or money, or gold, to not leave anything to destroy it all. This was something that was given. Sometimes that's a hard thing to do. Because right now, we fight, they're fighting a war over there that we see the, the, the destruction of it. I pray for everybody that's over there. I pray that they get, they get strength, they get the help they need because I thank God that it's not here in the United States. You do not know how blessed we are for it not to be here in the United States. Because the little pictures that they show, it ain't like seeing it firsthand. But to give you a better picture of what they see, imagine your car got wrecked and you on the inside of it. That's what they see. I thank God that is not here today. But nevertheless, God gave instructions for him to do a certain thing. Saul said, ah, you know what, king, <laughs> I'm going to spare you. And you know what, all that riches you got over there, put it on my donkeys and put it on my men. Let, let them bring it back. Let them bring it back. After this, God said, <laughs> I had enough. I had enough. I had enough. It's a sad thing to say if God said, I had enough. 
I had enough. I had enough. Verse 35, let me read that again. And Samuel went no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul. And the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. I want you to look at this picture. Saul did some things. Saul did some things that were not of God. He disobeyed direct orders. He disobeyed the commandment of God. He disobeyed what God wanted him to do. Because of the people, he changed his mind. Let me do this. Let me do that. But see, one thing that happened here, he mourned. Samuel mourned. Now see, it's, you can mourn for something that's not dead. Y'all, y'all know that, right? Let me, let me tell you why. You can, you can mourn for something that ain't dead. Because see, that thing is something that Saul is a that. Because Saul is that job. Saul is that relationship. Saul is that spouse. Saul is that community. Saul is that everything that is not of God. Amen. Because see, if you can give yourself, you can pour yourself into one somebody and then they don't produce what you put in them, that you got a problem. Amen. Because then you're going to feel something in yourself. You're going to feel sad. You're going to feel depressed. You're going to feel, oh, I can't do nothing else. You're going to feel like I can't even move. You're going to become stagnant. I, I, I had to write the definition of this word. It says, of a body of water, of atmosphere, of confined space, having no current of flow, and often having an unpleasant smell as the consequence. Imagine being stuck on somebody and all of a sudden you don't eat no more. You don't bathe no more. You just sick all the time and you just worry. Oh man, I can't believe this happened to me. I cannot believe this is going on. Next thing you know, somebody coming to your house. Brother, uh, have you taken a bath today? Man, did you see what this knucklehead did to me? Did you see what my job did to me? I worked I don't know how many years and I got a pink slip in my box. Do you see what happened to me? When you pour yourself into something for so long, then all of a sudden it doesn't give you what you gave it. Things are bad enough. Can you imagine being married to somebody? Pastor, how long you been married? 37 years. That's a house note. Can you Im- <laughs> Yeah, we still got one. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine being married to somebody 37 years? All of a sudden you wake up in the morning, I want a divorce. And can you imagine that? I've been loving this woman. I ain't talking about you, first lady, because I know you good. (laughs) I've been loving this woman for so long. I sacrificed so much. I've been giving to the church. I've been loving God and coming home and loving my wife, taking care of the household, taking care of all the utilities, fixing the car and doing all of these things and come mowing the grass, sweating till I don't have no more sweat to give and doing all these things, helping her out, moving around. And she going to wake up one morning and say, hey, I want a divorce. Wait just a minute. I did all this stuff, and you think you're going to get a divorce? Oh, Lord. Let me tell you. Saul, that is your Saul. That is your Saul. You give in to so much, and then therefore, 
you got problems. You mourning the thing that you put that much into. You mourning the thing you woke up for day after day after day after day. And I know he's ex-military, so and Tim, my brother Tim, ex-military, 4.30, 3.30, sometime in the morning, have to go out there and sweat and do all those things. Come to find out, uh, I'm kicking you out. Uh, you ain't performing very well. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. You give your all to something for so long, for so hard, every day, and, and day in and day out. You go mourn when it doesn't produce what you put in it. Because I know for a fact they put everything into their military service. They expect it to get a retirement check when they leave. And not just the retirement check, all the benefits that come with it. Because I know for a fact they still call him chief. And he ain't even wearing the uniform. That's how good God is. When you give in your all and you put him first, God said, I'm going to honor you to the very end. Amen. Y'all give him praise just for that alone. Amen. God is a good God. But see, some people, they think just because you're doing it all for them, they can do it by themselves. They can do it all them own. They say, I don't care what you gave to me. I can do I can handle it now. I can handle it now. I can do it by myself. But if God ain't in it, <laughs> it ain't going to work out. Amen. How many of y'all believe that? Give a, a shout out or a praise. Say amen. It won't. But when your expectations and your hope is anchored in the Lord. Ooh, ooh, just imagine what you're getting on the end. Because see, when you pour into somebody, you expecting them to do what you're giving them. Amen. You are expecting your job to perform the way you putting in your work. Amen. Because only thing that you should expect your job to do is to pay you. Amen. But you have to show up to get paid. Amen. You have to put yourself in the predicament to say, I'm going to give everything I can give. Because God said, give to Caesar's what is Caesar's. But give to God what is God. Amen. You do your very best to do everything you can do. Amen. And when you pour yourself into something or somebody, trust God that it's going to work out. Amen. But let me tell you this. When that something or somebody start to act left and thinking they can do it all by themselves, you better remind them who God is. Remind them because where were you yesterday before God touched you? Where were you five years ago before God came into your life? What were you doing before God came into your life? Because let me tell you something. Everything that God touches, he multiplies it and makes it better. Amen. Y'all believe they give God a shout of praise. You need to just give of your best in all that you do. Trust me, God will work it out. One thing, though, you can't rely on the man, the woman, the child, or your job, or anything else, finances, or anything of that nature. Because those things tend to fail you from time to time. Amen? Because I like this verse in verse 32, 1 Samuel 15, it says, surely the bitterness of death is past. Agai thought he was getting off. <laughs> God's memory is not short. Ooh, think about that for a moment. Just because they think that they got over just because a king let them go. They think, he think just because the people gave him a little bit of praise. Look, he brought back finances. He brought back gold. He don't mind he brought back the king, but look what else he brought. 
I could just imagine when he walked up to him, he said, whoo, surely <laughs> the, the death is past, right? And we, all that stuff is forgot. I could look at Samuel right about now. <laughs> Wrong answer. <laughs> what God said, I shall do. See, don't think people will get away with something God has already said to happen. Amen. So let me tell you this. Walk in what God put you in and let everything else just part way. Amen. Because when you follow what God does, look at what he can do. Amen. Because I watched a boot turn into a control center. I watched, a, I watched an iPad turn into the Oh, look. Can y'all see? What God has done. I remember standing out in the heat and my iPad dying because it was so hot. I remember those days. I remember pastor standing in the boat and I'm like, I ain't got no more video. <laughs> but look what God has done. Look what he has done. He said, I see a need for this. I said, for right now, this shall happen. Amen. All you got to do is be faithful and let him open up every other door. Amen. Give God just a shout of praise right about now. God will do it. I'm going to close with this. But I'm not going to close. Amen. First Samuel 16, one through three. It says. Now the Lord said to Samuel. How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill your horn with oil. And go, I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer, that's a cow, with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord then invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do you shall anoint for me the one I name to you how long are you going to mourn for Saul how long <laughs> are you going to mourn for Saul I, you know what? I know a, two, a thing or two about mourning. I know sometimes it's hard to get over a mourning thing. It's hard to push through something that's truly hurt you. I know a thing or two about that. Amen. And I've seen some people who definitely know a thing or two about mourning for something. Because it's kind of hard to push forward after that one thing. Amen. It's kind of hard to get out of that. It's kind of hard to clean yourself up. It's kind of hard to dust yourself off. It's kind of hard to get back to where you were. Amen. But he said, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? How long are you going to mourn for Saul? He asked him that question like, wait a minute, what? Oh, Lord, you know what you told me. You know what I did. You know all of these things. And you asking me, how long am I going to mourn for Saul? How long? You know what? I found out in this scripture that God gave you an answer. How long are you going to mourn for something? Somebody, someone, some job. Something, something that messed you up, something that got you on, something that got you going here. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to move on. But see, you got to find out how long it's going to take you just to mourn. How long is it going to take you just to get over this thing? Because God is asking you, how long are you going to deal with this? How long are you going to carry this thing? And you know what? I come to find out. <laughs> After reading scripture. How many of y'all got Bible readers in here? 
Everybody should raise their hand. Everybody Bible readers, right? He says, y'all waiting for how long? <laughs> what comes in the morning? Ooh, what comes in the morning? But see, that's not telling you how long. Because the night is a long time to wait, amen? The night is a long time to go through. Some people, night, they still right there in it, amen? Because how many of us always waking up dead? Yes, you can wake up dead, amen? Because you can wake up saying, oh, I don't want to mess with this day no more. I already see what's facing me. I ain't got no type of joy. Nobody better not say hello to me. Nobody better not touch me. Nobody better not ask me to do nothing. I am still in my nighttime. That alarm clock don't mean nothing to me. But according to the Bible, God asked the question, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? God answered him and he answered us. You got exactly one verse. Y'all catch that in the morning. <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night. But joy, joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. You got to wake yourself up to some praise. You got to wake yourself up to, to just giving God all your sacrifice of praise. Because what's that song? We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. He said you sacrifice all of that because you get rid of it because that's who God is. When you give him praise, he opens up a door for something better. Amen. He opens up. A, forget everything. What, what happened. Amen. Mourn no more. Praise me now and watch and see what I do. Amen. Because I got somebody for you. Amen. I got somebody that you need to contact. I got somebody that's going to give you what I tell you to do. Amen. See, David, whoo, he wasn't no chump. <laughs> he wasn't. David may have made some mistakes, but David was a worshiper. David worshiped God. They say he worshiped him right out of his clothes. But see, that's who David was. He was a true worshiper. Amen. So therefore, knock off of all those things. Because I don't see how somebody can even say, there is no God. I know you're going to mourn for something, but move on. Something better is coming. My brother, I don't know your name. What's your name? Right here is with Celine on your shirt. <laughs> Matthew. I was watching Matthew. He tripped me out this morning because I saw him singing the songs that they were singing. I saw him worshiping in a place where I ain't never seen him before, amen? But he came to the house and said, hey, I'm getting my praise on today, amen? I watched him with his head down giving God glory. Because see, there's something better in your praise, amen? When you give God your praise, God's going to touch you down inside. He's going to lift you up and give you a high hope. Because if the brother was singing, he ain't been doing nothing but smiling. Amen. That's how good God is. That's how good God is. When Reverend Zanet gave the welcome to the house, the house was already full of God's glory, God's grace. It was already flowing. So I know he felt at home just because he said, I'm going to give God some praise. Forget what happened to me yesterday. I showed up in the right house this morning. Amen. You don't have to mourn for nothing else. You did what you had to do. Get up and move. Amen. And I like this fact that ooh, he said, fill your horn and go. You know what that tells me? That it wasn't nothing. In, it, was, it was just empty. God said, you know what? Fill your horn. Fill it up with oil. Fill it up because I got other people that you need to touch. I got other people that you need to touch. It's a shame that it got wasted all on Saul because he drained him out. But God said, fill your horn. Get yourself up. Get to where I'm going to send you because I got something better for you. Amen. Amen. Woo. 
God is good. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And you know what? I'm looking at Pastor's oil. The la- I remember, was, I think it was two or three Sundays ago, he said, go get this from my desk. I didn't know what he was talking about. I was looking for a little vase. But when I saw this big old thing with oil, I say, man, man, and it ain't empty. Man, it ain't empty. Man, and it ain't empty. Because he got room, he got enough in there to touch everybody in here. And then did some more, amen? God's oil is always flowing, amen? If you keep it, what God gives you, he'll give you enough to touch everybody, amen? That's why I like the prayer to touch every household that is represented here today. Because if you're blessed, your whole household is blessed. Everything that you come in contact with. Everything that you come everything that you come to is blessed. Every word that you go is blessed. Because if he blessed you and trusting you to take that anointing, everybody that you come in contact, even your car, with gas prices so high. I believe you could probably go put a dollar in there and ride for a week. Don't try it. <laughs> Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, baby. (laughs) But I will say, if he know you ain't got nothing but a dollar, he will bless it. Amen. (laughs) He will bless it. He will bless it. God is just that good. Amen. All you got to do is trust him. Amen. Because see, everything that he brings you into, he's able to bring you out of it. Amen. Because I know for a fact that he's blessing you every day because you woke up this morning. Amen. You heard your voice. You heard your name being called by his voice. It wasn't your alarm clock. Amen. Because I had somebody head in my side of my head. And that didn't wake <laughs> Talking about my grandbaby. I love her too. But the thing is. <laughs> yeah, I was on the edge of the bed. But anyway. <laughs> but I know God woke me up. And I know he woke me up in my right mind. That's how good he is. Amen. And he led me to a place I know where worship was just flowing. Amen. How many of y'all enjoyed the worship this morning? Amen. You don't even need no charger. You already charged up. My only prayer is when you leave this house this morning or this afternoon, Take it with you. But don't 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 hold it all to yourself. Because what you want to do is give it out, 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 give it out. And get your fill on by giving God some more praise. Amen. Amen. Get your fill on by giving him praise and worship. Stay in his word. Stay in his praise. Stay in his worship. God will bless you. Amen. I want y'all just to get God just a shout of praise right about now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Move on. Better is on the way. Don't stop in your praise. Don't stop in your worship. Don't stop in your prayers. Because even while we're still speaking, he's still hearing. And he already know what you have need of before you even open your mouth. He knows everybody needs this, that, or the other. He knows everybody needs love. He knows everybody needs food. He knows everybody needs car. He knows everybody needs transportation. He everybody needs health and welfare. He knows this. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. He already opened up the door on that too, amen? <laughs> Ooh, if y'all didn't catch that, that health thing coming along. Look at how God works, amen? Ways to handle you in a way that you think that you can't do nothing with. But never, ever think that you can do it all by yourself. Never ever think you cannot do it. You cannot do it. God said, for I love this world. I gave my only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. And we sing enough Jesus up in here this morning to let you know God know that, hey, we know you did. We know you gave your best. We know you gave your best, Father. And I'm just going to give everything to you. 
pastor said it already. Don't go asking for this, that, or the other. Just go giving him thanksgiving and praise. You give him thanksgiving and praise, and your need is already met. Y'all give God praise. Amen. We want to thank each and every one of you for being here on today. We pray that you will leave this place differently than when you came in. But not just for today, but we pray that you would have something that would carry you until the time we meet together again. We thank God for you and we praise God. Let's pray. Father, we come now in the name of your son Jesus to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, and the thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thanking you, Lord God, for letting us know that sometimes we do have to move on knowing that something better is on the way. We thank you for the man of God who came and gave the word. We pray, Lord God, that you would refresh and you would renew his strength. We pray, God, that you would continue to use him, dear Heavenly Father, to touch the lives of many, Lord God. Heavenly Father, I pray that your spirit will continue to move from heart to heart and breast to breast among each and every one of the people that are not only here, but those who are watching us in digital land as well. Father God, we just want to give your name the glory, and we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the grace. Lord God, we thank you for the love, and Lord, we thank you for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. We bless you, and we praise you. These are many other things we pray in Jesus' name, and all God's children join in together, and we sing. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. The Lord was in this place today and we want to thank him. I'll tell you, it is amazing to me how God just chooses to show up before the actual service begins. We had a service before service, and God let that carry on all the way through, and we are so thankful to him for that. Because not only did he give us that time to give back to him, then God wanted to pour into us. Amen? Amen. 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 Tell us a little bit about Reverend Rose, what that, some of those things that God poured into us today. Like Pastor was saying that, what God showed this morning was even in the praise and worship, people had some things that they were going through, but they praised their way through. And then sometimes you can get stuck in a certain certain thing that you mourn for. You just you just worry about it day in and day out. But God has something better for you. And he showed up and showed out today that God showed you that he has something better for you. And it's always going to be something better for you. So just get out of your stuck place and move on with God and give him praise and glory. Amen. That's what we want to do. We never want to be in that stuck place. So thank you, Lord. We thank the Lord for that word. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Rose. Thank you so much. We want to invite anyone who uh, has the opportunity to come and join us at Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, 721 West 19th Street, to come and worship with us. You can worship with us on our Bible study on Wednesday evening at 6.15 p.m. or Sunday morning, Sunday school at 9 a.m. or even the worship hour. We would love to have the opportunity to love on you. So may God bless you. God keep you. That is our prayer. Have a blessed, blessed day. Amen.